bid on the Dwarves Door Het Hagland R shot, an old classic, one of my favourite races of the year. Got lots of cobbles, got lots of dirt roads. So here we go, Waff and Arctax straight away. We 43k out. There's a break up the road with a three minute advantage with his team represented, and off he goes. Janssens from Siebel Sabon tries to hold his wheel and manages to do that up this little climb, uh, which is not too difficult, but nonetheless, any climb a selection can may be made if you're going fast enough. So here they go over the top. All right, so then after that, Ken Van Bilsen decides that, yeah, this is a good move to get to, and he bridges across. So now there's three of them up the road, uh, which is a solid breakaway. Coffee is now represented because um, they don't think they had anyone in the break. But unfortunately for Siebel Se Sabon, Janssen's punctures, and that's the end of the day for him. So we then zoom up to 32k out up a steep little guys, and Matthew Vanderpol then decides this is the time to go. So he goes across um, on this little... It's quite steep here, you can see. Um, he goes across and decides to try and join uh, Wat Van Aert up the road. So if those two combine, then that really is the two strongest riders in the race up the road. Um, so you can see he's absolutely flying across. Um, not many people can really hold his wheel. I don't think, yeah, it's going to be hard for him. But fortunately for Wat Van Aert, Tim Merlier from his team, Veranda Classics, managed to get on the back of a flying Wout Van Aert, so that means that they, when they joined up, if they do join up, they'll uh, they'll have a numerical advantage again, so that was good good teamwork there. So then we zoom across to this great shot, I really like this part, where you can see they're just flying across the open fields on dirt roads. You can see Wout Van Aert's on the front, I'm um, sorry, <laughs> Wout Van Aert's on the front, but that's uh, Matthew Van Der Poel with Tim Merlier behind it, and you can see that Wout Van Aert's just in the, few, in, just in the full shot over there with Kenneth Van Bielsen on this wheel. So there's a decent decent gap, maybe 30 seconds or so between them, but nothing nothing too crazy. So um, it's definitely bridgeable. So you can see they sort of go these crazy roads. It's just such a good race. I really like watching it. Fortunately, I had no English commentary. And anyway, at 27K, it, the groups all came together. So Wout Van Aert, Matthew Van Der Poel, Kenneth Van Bielsen, and uh, Tim Merlier all riding together. <laughs> Look at this road. It's crazy, like doing this in the wet. Mental. So anyway, then at 26k to go, we then had a big junction. So there was a, a lot of teams uh, represented up the road, but even then that didn't stop a lot of teams trying to get in it. So we had Freddie Backart, a couple of um, Top Sport Vlaanderen people, who were like Rickett, who tried to get across, and um, fortunately for them, they did manage to get across, but it took a bit of time, and it definitely took their toll as some of them almost got dropped straight away afterwards. Um, to one of the um, one to group riders, um, and so there we go. Another coffee disc rider, Siebel Sabon. I think that was Janssen's we got across as well, and then the top sport Blundering person, and another um, another one T. But unfortunately for them, one of the one T in the top sport got dropped. So then we had in the final group, they're all chasing the breakaway. So you can see this party made the last pass, almost crashed the moto. Then we had another bloke who crashed there. Who slowed down the um, Rompot ride? I think that was Pico Van Ayen, whatever his name was. Um, you can see these roads are pretty treacherous. Like, if it's alright if you just try and take it slow, but if you're really racing around the corners, it can be very dangerous. Um, but anyway, we zoom ahead. There's no one cares if you crash, to be honest. It's quite just, it's a harsh world. But you can see this is crazy. So look how aggressive he takes it compared to the Moto Pardini, and then almost crashed into Moto. That's crazy. Not great motor driving there at all. But you can see there's three people up the road who are um, trying to trying to be the last man out. But Elliger um, also crashed as well. I think uh, he was the one group. Uh, sorry, the top sport man. Um, so you can see they're working relatively well. But I think the Veranda Classics guy is saying, "I've got well an arm behind me. I'm not, I'm not working." Um, so you can see the the brakes now been caught. Um, and they're just about to catch the people up the road. So that's basically what they were doing for the last. 20k before that they were just chasing up the road and they managed to bring it all back together there's a flying bead on if anyone wants one uh, 7k to go on the by the railway track anyway this is one of the dirt sections i think it's the uh this is the last dirt section and what when is had enough he doesn't want to drag everyone to the line so he's attacked he's gone flying over the top here as you can see and people are struggling to get on the wheel van der Poel managed to get on the wheel almost straight away i think he knows it's a it's a dangerous move but otherwise it's um it's quite, quite, quite tough to figure out who else is. I think Pico Van Ayn, who's the uh, 
rider from one pot, wrong pot, he managed to get on, um, and I think that's Kenneth Van Bilsen again who managed to get on the coffee disc rider, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Uh, it was hard to find any information about this race, it was mainly in Belgium. Um, there was no English commentary, there was last year, but this year there was no English commentary, which is a shame, because it's such a good race, and I feel like it's one of those races, oh look at that cheeky bloke goes on the inside, leave a gap, Wout van Aert and uh, Matthew Vanderpool will find it, Matthew Vanderpool is going fast on the motorbike, overtakes in there, Pico van Aert, and you can see that like the skills of the cyclocross riders, like they go a lot, lot faster, and um, when some of the people were getting dropped, that was the reason why, uh, on the gravel sections, because they just couldn't go as fast as Wout van Aert and Vanderpool around these gravel corners, so now we now zoom to the final kilometre, they're all together, they had a lot of attacking, Pardini was attacking, the uh, coffee is right, I think was, was attacking, but here we go, the final one, 6.7% average on cobbles, the Ala Hallengenberg, um, and here we go, so it's, it's, it's a quite it's a steep climb, I'd say, 6.7% is mainly due to the fact that it has, um, has quite a false flat to begin with, but it ramps up definitely, so Van Bilsen's gone for it on the front, it's really trying to lead it up, but this is where the cyclocross experts come up, cobbles, really short, punchy climbs, but Van Der quite far back, quite far back indeed, but uh, Wout Van Aert's really taking it up now, but I think Van Der Poel knew that if you go too early, it's quite easy to get caught out, because that's pretty much what happened to them last year when Nicky Tebstra won, <coughs> so you can see, here we go, Van Aert, and Van Der Poel's on his wheel, and he just knows he just has to outspin him at the very last, so you can see it goes around this tight corner, and then it flattens out and gets onto sort of a concrete road, and Van Aert's leading it out, but he now knows, oh no, Pico Van Aert and Matthew Van Der Poel are on my wheel, this is not going to be good, you can see it's a real tough, a tough finish, like everyone's got nothing left, because everyone's absolutely given it all, Wout Van Aert's sort of given up now, he knows he can't do it, Pico Van Aert's leading it through, but Van Der Poel, Leaves it very cool, very late, and just pips them at the line. But I think the message from that day was uh, don't do too much work. Van Aert attacked straight away, um, and that wasn't good. He then launched the other attack. He kept on attacking while Van Der Poel just sort of sat there, followed the attacks, didn't do too much work, managed to get his teammate to help him a lot, which Wout Van Aert didn't because he had a lot of teammates up the road. He had two teammates up the road plus two in that breakaway group. So when they all collided, they should have... They should have just started attacking because they had numerical advantage, but they didn't do that. And that left Wout Van Aert to, uh, to lose to Mathieu van der Poel, who just pipped him at the line. You can see here when they're going around that corner, you can see that Wout Van Aert knows he's lost it now because Pico Van Aert takes a big pull, a solid pull around him. And then Mathieu van der Poel can just on the wheel and just pips him at the very line. That was very close. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll... Um, I'll see you next year for the 2018 Dwarf's Door Het Hagland. Cheers for watching. See ya.